Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of making 3 custom Catan boards. Today we're just going to jump right in. You can see here the notes I made for all the required game pieces. For simplicity's sake, I'll break down this video into two main types of game pieces. There's the resource tiles and, well, everything else. These notes are very important to help me remember how much of each kind of piece to make and of what kind of wood. And of course, since I'm making three boards, everything was tripled. So we're going to start with the resource tiles. At first I thought I could make a master tile and then just kind of use that to get everything else to size by tracing and cutting and sanding. So that's what you see me doing here is preparing that master tile. I made two to see how well they would fit together, and as you can see, neither of them are perfect hexagons. Sand just a little too much on one side, and that affects three sides. The one you sanded, and the two adjacent. Multiply that error by 20 or so tiles per game, and you're going to have a very messy board. So I decided it would be necessary to use a CNC machine. So, I started prepping all the hardwood blanks for that. I used Purple Heart, Walnut, Paduke, Wenge, and Maple. And when I started resawing I had I think maybe a half inch blade with a medium tooth per inch count, but that blade was really not working well for resawing, so I got a three quarter inch blade with about four teeth per inch, which worked alright, it was definitely better, but if you're going to be resawing a lot, get the widest blade you can for your machine with as few teeth per inch. I'm too cheap, so I want all my blades to at least be semi-multi-purpose. And here's most of those pieces cut out. I think the Paduke is missing from this shot. I designed the CNC files to cut out seven tiles per board, and I did two boards of each color, which would give me more than enough tiles for each resource for three boards. I just knew I was gonna mess them up, so I planned ahead for that and made extra. This here is just me putting everything through the drum sander to make sure they were all the same thickness and that all the saw marks were removed. Also, just a side note for those that think a CNC machine is cheating and that it does all the work for you, well, hopefully this video will help show that that's not the case. I'm certainly no professional with a CNC, but after all, it is just a tool. There's still a ton of work that goes into the pieces pre and post CNCing. I spent hours and hours off camera just designing all the files, which granted, I'm a terrible designer, very newbie, but still, there's a lot of work that you don't see that goes into just getting to this point. That being said, this project would not really have been possible without it, so there's that too. Anyway, here you see me attaching the first victim, I mean a piece of wood, to the CNC machine. Like I mentioned briefly in the last video, one of the biggest challenges with CNC routers is holding your work down. I really like this method of using masking tape on the CNC bed and the workpiece with a bit of super glue between them to hold the work down, but as I discovered, it's not always enough by itself. On a couple runs, the router pushed the piece out of place, messing up the rest of the cut. Luckily, I only lost a couple tiles this way, and with the extra I had planned, it wasn't a big deal. Here you can see the result of the work getting pushed by the machine. The circle is totally off center on the last piece and I had to stop the machine early because being off meant it would have cut into a good piece. Eventually I started using these nifty little clamp down holding thingies in conjunction with the tape and glue and everything else cut smoothly after that. Once one board was done, I would get the next one started on the CNC machine and then work on cutting out the pieces on the bandsaw or sanding the edges or any number of other little things. This helped maximize efficient use of time since there was so much of both CNC work and post CNC work to be done on all the pieces. With sanding the edges, I was just removing any marks left by the CNC machine, so that included sanding six sides of each tile, plus I decided to put a small chamfer on the top side of the tiles for aesthetics and I had to knock off any fuzzies on the bottom edges. 
So that's six times six times six sanding operations for each tile, and I did that on about 60 tiles. So yeah, it was tedious. But while making these boards, I actually watched a video by one of my heroes, Adam Savage, former Mythbuster, prop builder for Star Wars, cosplay extraordinaire, and all-around awesome geeky maker guy. Anyway, he said something to the fact that 90% of any job, even if you love it, is tedium. But if you can get past the hard, annoying, tedious parts of a project you want to do, then in the end, you can make something you love and are proud of. I had to think about that a lot during this project. Anyway, you've been watching me figure out how I was going to drill out the holes. I tried a couple different bits and eventually ended on one that was actually a bit too big, which made me have to redesign the CNC files for the pieces I were going to fit inside, but it worked out in the end. A drill press would have been nice for this, but I did what I could with what I had. If I could go back though, I think I would have found a way to cut out the holes all the way on the CNC machine somehow. I had some problems with blowout on the backside of a lot of pieces, and some of them weren't centered properly, some of them ended up being ovals, but what can I do? So after they were all drilled out, it was time to clean up the holes. I wanted to get some sort of rotary abrasive that would sand out the holes and make them a little more uniform. I did find these scotch bright like things on Amazon and gave them a shot, but I don't think I can really recommend them for what I wanted. They were not very aggressive and disintegrated very quickly. But they did technically remove some fuzzies and stuff, so I guess they got that going for them. Anyway, after I was satisfied with that, it was time for the final surface sanding of the pieces. So I thought I'd try laying them all out on the table, fire up the orbital sander, and make quick work of it. Yeah. I know. I'm pretty funny. So I tried it again, only this time with the towel underneath. <sighs> yep, pretty much I just ended up sanding each one individually. I didn't even sand through the skin on my fingers, so that was cool. Oh, it was also about this time that I realized I didn't cut out any tiles without holes in the middle for the desert tile. I cut out an extra one because you know me. Anyway, it wasn't too much work to get those up to speed with the rest of them. So, the client loved the natural colors of most of the wood I had on hand, but he really wanted a good yellow for the wheat tile. So, I got set up to dye the maple pieces I had, and then my camera crapped out. So, all you get is the end results. I use the same craftsman technique as dyeing the boards from the last video. And I guess I wasn't satisfied with the final sanding I had already done with the orbital sander, so this is the final, final sanding that I did by hand. Did I mention there was a lot of tedium in making these? Alright, it's finally time for the best part of a project. Finishing. I used that same wipe on poly from the last video, and you'll also see that I used parchment paper to lay these out on but I don't recommend that unless you can spend some time flipping over the pieces every now and then. I didn't, and the bottom didn't dry out very well, and was kind of goopy when I came back to them the next day. They eventually dried out, but you could still see some imperfections in the finish after that. Also, you can see I'm using an old hand towel to apply the finish. That's also not recommended. It left some noticeable tint in the lighter tiles that I had to remove with some super fine steel wool later. I do recommend using super fine steel wool as a finishing touch after the polyurethane dries. That left the pieces feeling real nice. Oh, also just use an old t-shirt or something like that to apply the wipe on poly. And with the resource tiles all finished up, it was time to move on to all the other pieces. That included the number tokens, the road, settlements, and cities for each player, and the trading post tokens. Oh, and some robber pieces that I almost forgot until the very end. <clears throat> So I decided to use some of that 2x12 material that I bought for the boards. It was nice that it didn't all have to go to waste. And yeah, I really need some dust collection for this. I had to thin it down to just over the same thickness as the resource tiles. And after a few test cuts for the correct diameter of circle, it was time to cut them out. This was actually a really difficult CNC design dilemma for me. I needed to do two passes, one to cut out the actual circles, then switch bits and do another pass to carve the numbers and letters. I didn't have a single program that would do both of these passes for me, 
so I had to create two separate files with two different zero points and hope for the best. I was really pleased that I was able to figure it out, but it sure was stressful until I saw that second pass cutting mostly in the center of each circle. So off camera, I gave it a quick spray of black paint, which is another thing I wouldn't recommend. It would be better to just use a brush and apply some paint just to the characters. You don't have to be super careful because you can just sand away the excess, but it'll save you some time. And the method I used ended up leaving some unwanted blotches on a few pieces. So to quote unquote cut, out these number tokens, I just flipped the piece upside down and ran it through the drum sander a bunch of times until the pieces started falling out. It worked fine, just a bit time consuming. Also, there were definitely some fuzzies and stuff that needed to be removed by hand. And after a bit of hand sanding, it was time to finish them. I just used the same method as the resource tiles. I didn't film me making the trading post tokens that go in the ocean area, but it was exactly the same process as the number tokens. They were just a different shape. Then it was time to cut out all the player pieces. I had to do like 180 roads, and I don't even remember the rest of the numbers for everything else, but it was a lot process was much the same for cutting these out. They did however have to be dyed and not finished, so we'll get to that in a sec. Basically I just mixed up some acrylic paint and water, put all the pieces I would need for all three games in that color in a bag, and then douse the bag in the dye and mix it around. As you can see coverage wasn't totally great and some pieces needed some touch up, but that was easy enough, I just dipped my fingers in the dye and then rubbed it on the pieces. Then I just had to repeat that for all four colors of the players. And that was pretty much it. It was quite the journey getting here, but I learned a ton and can look back at the project with fondness. It might just be a while before I want to do something like this again. Anyway, I really appreciate the views. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of the project. Until next time.